really when I think about hunters, particularly season one, actually, because we work together like every day, Al and I, I just think about how lucky I was to spend time with him, so much time with him. Hi, I'm Logan Lerman, and this is EW's Roll Call. Bye, Susan. Yes, that was my first movie. First movie I worked on. I was really young, really lucky to work on a on such a cool project back then. One of the more memorable. I mean, I guess it's it was the newness of it that made it so memorable too. It was my first time on a set, and it was massive. And I just have distinct memories of Roland Emmerich, the director, um, and his and his sister, I believe, who maybe produced it with him, but I was so young, I don't know. I just remember seeing, you know, these massive sets, these huge build-outs and the hundreds of background actors required for the scenes, for battle scenes, and it was just so epic and grand, and it was my introduction to uh, film life and set life, and I was just in love with it, and I, you know, didn't realize at the time that not every movie was going to be you know, like this massive, uh, at the time, Mel Gibson starring epic. It was just overwhelmingly cool to be a part of a production and to see it for the first time. Oh, there's no performance. There's no performance. With a child that age, unless you're like Dakota Fanning, no one's giving, giving anything. You're just a prop. They're like, bring the kids in. Cool, have them stand here, send them back to school. Bye. Like, it was just in and out, child prop. Yeah, I've seen those owls. Hey, little guy. Can they build that pancake, please? Those owls are toast. They don't care about little birds, even if they are in danger. We're bulldozing today. today. Today? We're moving on to Hoot. We're jumping. Okay. I remember that shoot so well. I mean, we had so much fun. All the, the kids on that movie. We shot it in Florida, and it was miserably hot in like the thick of like August heat. And I just remember sweating so much every day and having to run so much and just having a great time with uh, with that cast. I remember you had Brie Larson and Cody Lindley and I got to work with my best friend. I'm still my best friend to this day. His name's Dean Collins. And I remember learning about Jimmy Buffett because I had no idea who he was. And he produced the film and he was in the movie. And in Florida, he was like, a, I mean, maybe he still is like a god. And But in California, where I was from, I had no idea who he was. And it was kind of amazing to see this Beatles-like fandom for Jimmy Buffett. And to me, I just, I didn't understand it at the time. And now I get it. I get it. I remember him doing, it was kind of a weird thing. His like rap gift or something was just a bunch of his own merchandise. And I thought it was just such an odd thing at like 13 years old. I was like, okay, nice. Your rap gift for people is just gonna be like Margaritaville. That was kind of funny. But no, I just have great memories from that because of of the people, the people uh, I was working with, the rest of the cast, they were really special. Maybe he's right, Pa, maybe we should go home. What did Doc Potter give his life for, will you? Yes, I, I was his son. He was my father. And uh, that was a really great experience. I, I, was, I mean, I felt so lucky to be a part of a movie like that. I was really hungry to learn and be around people that I admired. That whole team, I mean, just blew me away and were people that uh, I just wanted to learn from. So. I was a student, a very passionate and, and, you know, I mean, tried to be attentive and do everything that I can and learn from, from these people, um, while also just being a part of it, just committed to the process. And, um, no, but my memories of that are like, are like riding horses all the time with, with Christian and Bale and Russell uh, Crowe, who also starred in it. We just all spend time together riding horses through the, uh, through the mountains and things like that. And our days off and talking, getting to know each other and just learning from, from these very generous, kind, 
actors. We had to learn how to, um, you know, ride and shoot guns and like, you know, I mean, shooting blanks while jumping under your horse and spinning around and shooting the gun, the bad guys. And, you know, we were playing in a Western. It was really, really cool. I hope I get to do that again one day. Make a Western then. Take this to defend yourself. It's a powerful weapon. Guard it well. Only use it in times of severe distress. This is a pen. Oh, how did I book it? I uh, I auditioned. I went through a whole audition process with. Whew, I'm trying to remember like the whole thing. I it was like casting, and then with the director. I mean, Chris Columbus and and his producing partner Michael Barnathan, and like the whole team at that at the company at the time because it was a different it was a different company. It was Fox 2000. And the amazing people over there, I gotta like audition for all of them and earn it. And then I remember going to a screen test in the studio, being like, "Sign this contract if you want to come inside. Like, we get to choose if we hire you, but here's the contract." And it was like a five-minute moment where I was like, "I, what do I do? Do I look over? I don't know. How to look over a contract from 17? Like, what do I? I guess just sign it and have faith that I'm gonna have a good time and learn a lot if I get it." and I was lucky enough to get it. And it changed my life. It was a great project. Oh, how nice of you to show up just to watch me win. You know, everything they say about you is wrong, Clarice. You actually do have a sense of humor. I wasn't necessarily expecting uh, them to come back and make a sequel because so a good amount of time had passed. I just didn't know if it was like really gonna happen or not. And I remember they, they called me up and said, we're gonna do it. And it was a whole different creative team. And I was like, oh, oh no, what do I do? Who are these people? And I got to know them and uh, collaborate with this whole other team. And that was a new thing for me. I remember that kind of being a little uh, scary at the time. You know, we went through the process and got to know each other and worked on the script. And like with anything else, you take the, take the opportunity and try to make the best thing you can with it. And, but it was an interesting experience for sure, jumping in with a whole different creative team. With a book, you have you have the foundation you know there you can go back to it and read it and pluck things and learn more maybe about your character your role and um you know with a screenplay that isn't based off of off of anything uh any other materials you know you have the freedom of interpretation of what you're reading you could bring i mean i guess there's still that with a book but or with the comic book whatever the material is that it's based on but there's still freedom to bring yourself to it and interpret it the way that you want to. But the, with a screenplay that's completely original, it's yeah, no one has any preconceived ideas of who this person is. So you can kind of fill in the blanks. I'm driving away and just feeling so small, just asking myself, why do I and everyone I love pick people who treat us like we're nothing? We accept the love we think we deserve. Yeah, it was just the first time I read a script and just knew I wanted to do it right away. I just really loved the read of it. And it's something I've been chasing ever since. Just that feeling. Feeling I got when I read Perks for the first time. The experience was just so special. I mean, it was magic the way it came together. And it was really one of the great experiences I've had so far. Really, really special all around. I think about those days and making it and we just really, uh, just fondly, just good memories. Really good memories. But it was a hard one. It was a difficult shoot and we, and we took it really seriously and wanted to make something great. I think ultimately it was the, it was the entire experience that was challenging because I was trying to stay in it the whole time when we're there. So I, I can't really pinpoint one day and say it was more challenging than the other. It was all uh, a bit difficult, but really rewarding. And and at the same time, it it was great. It was fun, and we had a good time. I think you can do you can take on challenging material and still enjoy the process. And I think that's super important. It's something that I learned from that from that experience. All you creationists do is blow chances at getting laid. Really? Ooh, that was awkward. You've really got to stop stalking me. Can't even go anywhere without you showing up to annoy me. Were you hitting on that guy? But it's none of your business. 
I think he's a Mormon. Well, what the hell's he doing here? Yeah, he's probably trying to find other Mormon girls. I'm sure you corrupted him, ruined his relationship with God. You want to get out of here? I honestly, person, I really, when I think about that, that, that experience, I think about, I think about Nat a lot. How much I loved him and was impressed by him at the time. I was just like, he's so talented and funny and great. And I just love this kid. Yeah, we, we remained close from that. And Josh Boone, the director, um, writer, like we, we were really tight during that process and we're still good friends. And it was just, a, it was a fun experience. You know, it wasn't all on my shoulders. It was like, a, it was an ensemble and it was, you know, romantic and comedic, and a little bit dramatic and all these things. It was just, it had all the elements in the, in the screenplay, but they didn't feel too uh, daunting at the time. So I could just go in and just have fun working with people that I really respected. In between like Jennifer Connelly and Greg Kinnear and, and Lily. I got to work so much with like Lily Collins too. And she's great. Yeah, maybe they're together. Hey, let's have hope. Let's have some hope. Let's end with some hope. Maybe they, maybe they stay together, and there's, you know, more of their relationship in the imaginary sequel to Stuck in Love. Why are you here? You're here to kill him. You know why he's here? He's here to kill you. He's here to kill you. He's here to rip your throat off. Yeah. Pull your... God! Ah! Ah! trying to teach you something. That was a miserable shoot. That was a miserable film to make. And it was testing. It was like testing. I was testing myself and I think we were all cast. We were all kind of challenging our, each other and challenging ourselves and pushing each other to try to see what we could find if, if we take it to extremes and stuff. So it was a, it was a tough shoot. But I, I look back and 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 think about that process and the memories are just so rich and fulfilling i feel like you know it's like thinking about completing a marathon or something it's like ah, i did that we got through it the shoot was like six months and then we had six months of uh prep so all together yeah, i mean that was the longest one of the longest shows, uh, productions I've been on. It's about a year with the research and everything, you know. We spent six months just learning so much, uh, you know, from classes to traveling to uh, military bases and spending time with soldiers from various wars and just gathering so much information, going through our own boot camps and spending a lot of time together rehearsing and talking about the material. Yeah, it was a really you know strong group of actors though and we were all wanting something I think like really wanting to be taken on a journey by by David Ayer the director and we were willing participants in this like hell ride that he created <laughs> and I hope the movie's good I'm like we went we put we, we went through like a lot to try to make it like uh, feel um as uh, miserable as it looks. <laughs> oh, well, look at this. Sleeping Beauty. Wakey, wakey. Eggs and bacon. What am I? You're safe now. Your father sent us. You read these words from my father? Oh, easy. We could deliver you back to your pops in a box. Technically, we're outside contractors. I'm tangerine, he's lemon. Like the fruit? Oh, it was great. It was so nice to, to like be in production, doing something fun during uh, a time where nobody was really working and everybody was uh, worried about what was gonna happen next during the pandemic. It was about seven months in. It was just fun to have something to do on a set. Everybody was shut down. There was nothing going on. Some reason this one broke through and was able to go into production. Yeah, it's all Brad. Brad has the power. They they must have put a lot into it. 
uh, Sony, and they were like, we can't just shut it down. We have to make the movie, even at the cost, the added cost. But they were able to do it. I was able to go to work for like a week or whatever it was that I worked on it. I have a very small part. It was just fun. It was so nice. And I got to hang out with, you know, these great actors all the time. But one of them being Joey King, who is just the best. And um, we're working together right now. And, you know, I'm in my hotel room here. This is not my home. I'm in a hotel room in Romania and we're working together on a show. And uh, so we get to go. We're doing it again, which is nice. Yeah, I saw the trailer and I was like, why did you guys give away that I died? Why is this in the trailer? It would have been a, you know, good little surprise in the theater or something. Or something that kind of kicks off the story a little bit for at least the, you know, two of the characters. I got to be like Weekend at Bernie's. Uh, I got to be like Bernie. Yeah, dead body who's like acting like my arms are moving and <laughs> my head and things like that. It was silly, fun stuff. But, you know, everybody was there to have a good time. There was this sense of like, just gratefulness from everybody to just be doing it, to just be in a production and to, you know, be in a production is like a family and to, you know, jump in and be a part of this like team, this family dynamic. Why are you here? I think that Hitler is still alive. Hitler's dead, Jonna. Says who, the Russians? They found his body and just simply burned it. You really believe that? He's living down in South America. I'm in. But where are your friends? Cover your ears! We're going to find him. We need new members. Looks like we found one. Hunters, season two. We always had a concrete ending with season two. It didn't, I don't think the plan was ever to go uh, past that. It seemed like we, we know this is a this is where it's supposed to end and it was perfect and it was great and it was such a great time but i can't wait for people to see it it's, it's really it's really cool and something i'm really proud of do i remember the first scene that i shot oh my god well yes i do it was like a whole action sequence pretty much where like the core group you know of the hunters pretty much all of us you know all like the central cast we were um infiltrating uh, we were like this opera house in South America trying to find uh, one of the bad guys, one of these Nazi collaborators. It was so cool. I got to, yeah, so I basically dressed like one of the, um, one of the uh, staff and I get to go in and like, there's this huge action sequence and fight scene with some of these bad guys and it was just so much fun. Well, I really learned uh, a lot about the process of making a TV show. Uh, the whole thing, actually, really the whole process, which was different for me because I'd really only done uh, movies until then. I mean, I did a TV show when I was like a little kid, but it's been years and years and years. So, and it's changed so much. It's not the same. TV's not the same. Yeah, so I was just kind of learning about this new process in which, you know, you don't see the scripts. Usually I I'm, I'm, I signed on to a project based off of loving the, the draft of the screenplay. And uh, in this situation, it's more of a leap of faith and a process of, um, it's a little bit more run and gun than a movie is. You're getting scripts on the go and you have limited time to, to realize them or to, to think them through. Well, in the first season, it was the quality of the team and the writing of the first episode, which was still being rewritten, but it was good, and I liked the character. But on top of that, it was, you know, David Weil, Alfonso Gomez Rajon, who's, who's, who's a fantastic filmmaker, and Jordan Peele asking me to do it. It was a calculated decision. Like, I think this is a great team. And, and Nikki Toscano, by the way, who was on the first season, she didn't do the second one, but she was also the showrunner with David Weil. I was like, I trust these people to continue producing great scripts. I want to I want to see this through. It seemed exciting. It was new. And I'm proud of the second season. I think it's really, really, really fun. But Al being the one that I was like, that'd be f***ing amazing. Uh, and with like actually a lot of the other people that, that they mentioned, I was like, wow, these are all incredible actors. But Al came on and, um, and joined the team and I was, uh, yeah, 
really good company. My first scene with him, why do I think it was it was like a stage scene? It was like on, it was on a stage, you know, built to, indoors. And I think we were arguing about something. I think I found I I found like a secret room and discovered that that his character isn't who he says he is, and that he, you know, I kind of like started to realize that he's hunting Nazis, basically. And、uh, we had this like intense dialogue back and forth, and it was our first scene together. And、uh, I just remember just how amazing that was to work with Al Pacino. Every second you spend with him is just a treasure. Like it's just you. You just absorb anything you can from that guy if you're around him, and he's such a generous, loving, passionate、uh, actor. He's an he's an educator. You know, he really loves to talk about process and teach you. Really, when I think about Hunters, particularly season one, actually, because we work together like every day, Al and I, I just think about how lucky I was to spend time with him, so much time with him, and learn from him. And rehearse with him, and dissect material with him, and I just、uh, one of the greatest experiences of my life, really.